Do you know how many coaches an NFL quarterback has? Oh, I think the average number is nine. Yeah. There's a fitness one. There's a, you know, their basic health and everything else. And it's insane. Why? Because you can't be an expert in everything. And what you're doing is you're taking somebody else's wisdom and guidance who is not in that forest there that you're trying to get out of. And I, I describe, man, I'm the drone above the forest helping you, letting you know to turn left or turn right. You've got to do the hike. You've got to do the work. But I can get you out quicker. I can get you to the next level faster and make help you make an amazing life for yourself. But you're the one doing the work. I'm just the guide along the way. Yeah. And we all need I still have a head, I still have a coach I work with. Yeah. I'm yeah. going through an actually a new coaching program as well to improve my skill sets on things. This is not a destination. I'm done. I've got to a certain point. If you want to have a fulfilling life, this is a lifelong journey of working with somebody on something. It may be physical this time. It may be your emotional or energy you know, or a relationship thing, but there's always something we need to be working on and improving because if we're not growing, we're dying. And it sounds cliche, but it's true. Right. We did an interview with Jillian Michaels a few years ago. She's on our, on our channel. You can find it. And even she says, why would I not want to shorten the amount of time that it takes me to learn something? And by shortening it, I just mean, teach me to not fail remove the obstacles of failure so that I can succeed faster. And when she said it to me, I was like, oh my gosh, what, why does that make so much sense? And obviously people who know Jillian Michaels, she is such an in your face type of person, mm -hmm. which is not everybody's cup of tea. But when you talk about removing the obstacles of failure, yeah. You know, and I think that for those of us who have seen success and failed over and over again, because that really is what success means. We've done that for ourselves. We can succeed because we know what those failures are. We don't give ourselves enough credit. Now it's time to learn the next stuff. And it, it really is. I think I've heard you say in the past, it's in conversations together. It's in that deep work, that emotional, energetic work that it's good. We just don't give ourselves an opportunity to get in there and, and swim there. It's the best part of being a coach is it requires you to do that work with others constantly. So you're also doing it for yourself, with yourself. The reason I have the relationship I have now with Melanie is because of all the mistakes of the past, because I didn't know better and I wanted to change something. And quite honestly, I'm not afraid of failure because it is a stepping stone on the path to success. What is one thing that you think you have had a fear of success of? So when I decided to become a full-time coach, it was something I was doing. I'd looked at for a long time, couldn't found the right, right training program. And I had a fear. I had these three core friendships that I would lose those friendships. And it's not necessarily bad. And, and one of them did die off. They are not a person who's in a growth mindset at all. And if you are on a growth trajectory and somebody else is not, it changes things. And one died off. One is close to the same. And one is just not quite the same depth and level of friendship it was. Still a good friend, but I've gained some friends that I could call up and ask them to help me move a body, and they'd be like, I'll be there in a couple of hours. That's it's always my running joke of it's about how many people will help you move a body. And I have now a friend, Charlie, that is like brother I've never had. And uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world, but I didn't want to lose those valuable friendships, but I was going to have to be stuck if I didn't make this change. And, and I was, I knew this is what I needed to do. And, you know, one died off. 
I spoke with one of the other two today and I had lunch with the other one on Wednesday, you know? So I'm, and I've added, I've got a half a dozen more people in my minivan, you know, of close friends that I could talk to about anything. So I'm blessed. Yeah. I think that, uh, having a fear of success is definitely a reflection of, you know, what you've worked for. Right. I, I think that when we get to a place, so we've recently gone through a significant acquisition where we have acquired another company and it's hard. It's, it's one thing to go get to a level of success. You know, I work pretty hard to keep my dad's uh, voice alive in my ear and working up to what I think he would consider success, but to keep, um, keep my eyes open to what is also out there. You know, I, I know I'm doing work that he would be proud of to potentially jeopardize that, you know, to make a, take a risk and potentially jeopardize that. And that's one of the things I think is hard for entrepreneurs is the head trash that we have too. you know, who do you surround yourself with? Again, this is kind of back to the, who do you take judgment from people who are further Mm -hmm. down the road from you are never going to cast judgment, but it's our own head trash and what we are doing to keep we're going to keep on this topic today, but that's what we're talking about. Keep your energy high and make sure that you are not down on your own self it is hard, is a hard enough game for those of us who are exhausted and fueling ourselves well and things like that. So for a level of success that I want again, because I'm never going to be stagnant, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's hard to continue to chase success, knowing what I have given up a lot like other people. I've given up a marriage. I've given up other relationships. I've given up time with my children. I've given up. I struggled to get the business that I have. We're at a level of success now where do I go again? And what does that look like? Well, what's riskier for you, Kat? Playing it safe or taking the risk? Interestingly enough, so we'll we'll stay on this because this is a little uh, off what we were going to talk about. That is the receiving version of me in my feminine. So because we have received, we are, we are at a level of success here at my company and my kids are grown and, you know, I can, I've done this work now being able to take an opportunity like going through an acquisition was a very receiving moment for me to be fair. One of my children brought me this opportunity and we took it. It is not a it's not a survival piece for me anymore. This isn't something we have to do to be able to put food on the table anymore. And that awareness for those, for those of people that are out there listening to this conversation today, thinking, well, I don't have to do this. You're right. But for a lot of people, business is your playground. Now it was your survival to feed your family, get out of corporate America, whatever it was, it was your survival mechanism. Now I hear people tell me all the time, well, I do business for fun or my favorite, I go to work because work is what I enjoy, or it's easier to go to work, which I'm sure Dennis, you hear as well. There's a whole slew of things that come out of that, but you may do what you do for a living for fun. This opportunity was me in a receiving mode saying, okay, you know what? I actually get to enjoy this, but that comes with risk. So where is the balance for me in taking care of others, providing employment for others, getting to do this really cool thing? By the way, I got to go back to my engineering background in this. This was kind of a self, selfish self-care thing, which was kind of cool. But this was a little bit more me. And that's very different. I'm the one that's bam, taking care of business, right? Do, doing for others. And this is a different level of success that comes with fear. I love it. I uh, I don't consider what I do work. I love, yeah. I, I went from in my 20s, 30s, and probably early 40s. Um, oh, I'll retire at this age, retirement, social security, blah, blah, blah. I will be 58 in two weeks. Yeah, two weeks from two, two weeks from yesterday, I guess. I actually have projects and plans right now out through for 15 years. It's it's mindset, a lot of this. Your mirror is your biggest competition. It really is. And 
you know, I, I mentioned this to you at one point, you know, I do CrossFit. I started CrossFit in my fifties and there was a guy at the gym, this 28 year old, he was a beast. You know, you, you're like, I'm not jumping on a box. This guy could do a double box jump. It was insane. Uh, my shins just hurt looking at it. And when I showed up, especially that first couple of weeks, I'm like, I was a little bit like, oh boy. And and I'm a two-time Ironman and I was intimidated. And then I finally had the light bulb come on. The guy who you look at in the morning in the mirror is, you know, before I go to CrossFit, did I leave it all out there? Am I better than that guy yesterday? That's the only thing I need to work towards. And I've really taken that in all aspects of my life. Call to action. Um, how about something to do with energy and how people can check in with their own energy? What do you think? Yes, I think I want you all to take for the next week, periodically throughout the day, I want you to be systematic and, and stop and grade, evaluate how you feel energetically. And, you know, whether it's up, down, uh, and, and it doesn't have to be, and we're not just talking physical energy, we're talking emotional and, and the whole nine yards. And see if you can pinpoint what's causing it. I also want to challenge you some push ups, air squats. If you're feeling a little down or you're feeling a little sluggish energy wise, do something physical. I will not ask you to do burpees because I'm not evil. Come on, you're talking to the burpees coach. Come on, I Dennis, hate, I was ready I for burpees. Hate, I hate burpees. Hey, listen, you know my deal. If you're not ready to put the work in for the classroom, then you got to put the physical work in. So your air squats sound like nothing compared to my burpees, man. Push-ups and air squats, I said. <laughs> <laughs> and But it's get the blood pumping and then get out of your head. By getting into your body a little bit, you're going to and then, and then I want you to evaluate, okay, how am I feeling energetically now? Because if you figure out in a week that, you know, I was a little down here and I was feeling a little off and you can either identify why, or you realize I have the ability to change my physical state, my emotional state, my energetic state with activity, you've unlocked a superpower. And if you're honest with yourself, you might also pick up my three lowest energy states involve dealing with this one person. It might, you might have an Eeyore in your life. You need to, you need to either minimize or remove. We love that. We would totally support all of that. If you're looking for uh, any additions from me, we would suggest that you actually write this down. You will not remember these things. See, we have a tendency to make things right in our life. Yeah whether they're right or wrong. So if you're a person that wants to write it down in your cell phone, keep track there, but actually write it down. So you catch our next YouTube video. Uh, if you're using a battle book through oxygen, do it in your behavior part portion of your, of your battle book, but write it down because you want to make sure you can look back and say, Hey, you know what, that Dennis guy, he actually kind of knew what he was talking about. Uh, and, and really be, be honest with yourself and you don't have to share it with us, but you, that way you don't try to make it right in your head. Um, and you can really see that. Okay. I love that. All right. So a uh, couple housekeepings, Dennis and I are going to come live on YouTube on April 20th at 2 PM Eastern. So if you like this, you can follow up the videos and watch the remaining three sessions, but then set your calendar for April 20th at 2 p.m. Eastern, and you can jump on, you can ask us questions. You can also follow Dennis and I on YouTube, so you get all of the videos or reach out to one of us. Uh, Dennis, your YouTube channel and email address for contact? So it's Man of Legacy on YouTube, and my email is denniscollins at manoflegacy.org. Okay, and we'll then, make sure all that's in the details for the video, details. but uh, if you're yeah. audio or if you're auditory, then you can grab it there and you can grab oxygen at oxygen coaching on YouTube and info at oxygen coaching group.com. So we'll see you guys all next week. Thanks, Dennis. All right. Thank you, Kat. <laughs>